I went from getting maybe a hundred views a month to around like 40 to 50 million. This is my friend Johnny and he's a YouTube Shorts genius. And so we jumped on a call and I asked him to share his top nine YouTube short secrets for going from zero to hero. I have basically in the past six months just exploded on shorts. I, I've been doing YouTube since like 2016 and it wasn't until recently that I really figured out what I needed to do to be successful on the platform. I'm known as like the bad ideas guy. Uh, my my whole gimmick is I just have a bunch of ideas for things because like I'm always I'm always thinking of like random ideas for like what if there was a superhero movie where it's the Flash but he's like out of shape and like he, he just runs abnormally fast. Stuff like that. So I went from getting maybe a hundred views a month to around like 40 to 50 million awesome dude well i know you had some time to prepare some kind of tips that you want to share with people who are looking into creating shorts so do you want to dive into that the first thing that just immediately out of the way you have to give people a reason to care about you there's a million people on tiktok that like talk about um, different facts or whatever. And it's like the same music, it's the same presentation, it could be anybody. But you have the power to make your content so much better, so much more unique. Like for me, I'm like, all right, I wanna make my content more visually engaging. I saw like, all right, there's a lot of people that make content talking about movies, talking about ideas that they have for stuff. But I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna make my own like genre, basically. The first one that really did really well for me was The Widest Receiver, which was like a, a pun I came up with two years ago. And I'm like, like, you know what I'm just gonna make a short about it and I was like all right I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell more of my bad ideas because this is this is funny for me people have like different takes on it they're like are the ideas bad like oh I think they're actually really good for me that's just a formula I found that works and it's it's unique to me nobody else is making a video like that and if they are I haven't found them yet there's a certain point where you're like, as a viewer, I don't want to continue watching this. Like I'm only watching this to get the video done. That's the point that you have to change. Like I'll show my friends a video and sometimes like they'll start looking at their phone like while they're watching the video. And I'm like, okay, that's the point that it's bad. If my friend doesn't care enough to watch their friend's video that they're like on their phone right now, then I know the video needs something at that point. Like when you're watching something, you're like, I enjoy this. Or when you're watching something, you're like, I'm bored. You don't really know how to describe it, but you know the feeling that you're feeling. And the chances are, if you're feeling that, everybody else watching it is feeling it too. So like when you're making your video and you're watching through and you're not enjoying it, change that part. Really like look deep and say like, okay, why am I not enjoying this? And you can say either cut that part or, or change it. Do you have a sort of script or structure or rough model in your head that you follow or are you literally kind of feeling it out with each piece of content? It, it, it's just something you have to kind of know from experience. There's certain points where I'll make a video that goes too long or like when I'm making a script, I'm like, all right, this isn't interesting anymore. Like that's why people are leaving. So like for me, what I try to do is present an idea describe that idea, but don't go too far off the rails, leave enough open to interpretation, but also explain it enough that I like am able to talk about what I want to talk about. You learn it as you go. Um, and that's, that's one of the biggest things is it takes time. It takes a lot of time. I've been on YouTube since 2016 making stuff. That was, that was six years ago. So there's a lot of learning that you need to do and a lot of literally trial and error. Also, here's another tip that can help you guys get more views on your shorts, but even your long form videos, thanks to today's sponsor, Licked. As you hopefully know by now, retaining your viewers for as long as possible is crucial to YouTube success. And when it comes to audience retention, music is a tool many creators forget to take advantage of. Probably because finding good music for your YouTube videos can be about as fun as sticking bicycle spokes in your eyes. Much of the royalty free music on the internet nowadays just sounds like a barrel of laryngitis infested cats rolling down a staircase. And the mainstream music you actually want to use in your videos, you know, songs by artists like Bruno Mars, Sam Smith, or Panic at the Disco. Panic, exclamation mark at the Disco? Panic at the Disco? I, I, I don't know. Someone needs to teach this man how nouns and grammar work. Anyway, the music you actually want to use is copyrighted. But that's where Lick comes in because they have the world's biggest music catalog for creators with over 100,000 royalty free songs that don't sound like a barrel of laryngitis infested cats. But what's actually pretty cool is that with Lick, you can also license mainstream music to use in your videos or without getting copyright claims or being demonetized. For example, I can play this banger by Macklemore and vibe out behind my keyboard while laughing maniacally in YouTube's face. Because thanks to Lick, they can't take my ad revenue. Anyway, check out the description down below and you can sign up to Lick with my link for 14 days free stock music and 50% off your first mainstream track. Anyway, on to Johnny's next tip. Usually when, like, when you post a video, you'll get like just huge spike out of nowhere and then flatline. 
a lot of times YouTube needs to know from that thousand views, did this video do good? Did people like this video? Was it performing well? And what I've found is a lot of the times certain video topics just have a peak and just reach the max audience that YouTube has. And other times it just isn't the right time, I guess. Because like the problem with shorts is you look at it in a, in a short time frame. You're looking like a week after the video like came out like for performance. But a lot of the times like videos will pop off way after the fact because like <laughs> YouTube just like randomly decides sometimes <laughs> short form viewers want to watch short form content not all short form viewers want to watch long form content there are people that go on YouTube, go to the shorts tab, and that's all they do on YouTube. You can get a, a head start from shorts going into long form stuff, but the long form stuff has to be a good video. Like it has different criteria, which I'm still kind of trying to figure out. I've had a couple of recent successes. Part of it's just me <laughs> posting links in the comments. So what you need to do is you need to turn that long form video into a short form video. A lot of the times, like the best shorts about main channel content are basically turning the main channel content into a short because clips of a longer video typically have worse pacing than like a, a shorts pacing would be. They're two different types of content. You need to pull some full metal alchemist transmutation on that to make it more uh, digestible. So the next thing I say is you have to make something that is replicable. Finding something that is replicable but different is kind of the best way I can describe it. Like for me, I talk about bad ideas. That could be a bad idea for anything. It could be a movie. It could be a game. It could be a way to make toast. Like it doesn't matter. You need to be able to do something that is going to continually be able to be replicable and be entertaining and original at the same time. It's a really hard thing to do. And that's why there's a lot of burnout because a lot of people, they'll have one gimmick that they do and they just have to do the same gimmick over and over. And if you want to do something else, you just have to start over. The next thing is research. Um, you should always be trying to learn, always be trying to improve yourself. And like for me, a lot of the times, like if I'm in like a creative slump, I'll just like scroll TikTok, see what other people are doing and use that to inspire me to do other stuff. You can find these ideas that people have and you can like pick parts of it and use that in your own stuff. If you look at anybody who's successful right now, a lot of what they do is just taking something that somebody else did and doing it in their own way. Now, there is a difference between being inspired and being a clone. You look at people who are like, this guy watched a Mr. Beast video and is like, I'm going to edit exactly like that. And that's less genuine. People are going to care less about that person. They're going to be like, this is derivative rather than its own thing. But if you're able to use ideas in your own way creatively, you're going to be able to so much better improve your own content. For you, is there like a minimum criteria where you're like, if it doesn't get at least X average percentage viewed, then the video has no chance of going viral. Basically, the way I look at it is I don't have like a cutoff. It's variable depending on like the niche, but I'd say just shoot as high as you can. And if you're getting below like 50, <laughs> reevaluate. <laughs> <laughs> My final point is to optimize. You have your formula, you have your unique ideas. Now it's your turn to evolve that content on its own. There's a million ways to do it. There's not like one way, like this is the one thing that you can do to be a shorts creator. Like you can do literally whatever you want to do. And if you just figure out how to play to YouTube, like it is, it's going to work. Well, Johnny, thanks so much for sharing. This has been awesome. But for those of you who want to learn some very specific actionable tips you can start doing right now, check out the video on screen where I share 28 YouTube shorts hacks that feel illegal to know.